We've covered regression quite a bit already and looked at lots of things like interactions, but now I really want to give you another example of how useful regressions are for making specific business decisions, and we're going to do that in the context of multiple regression. So in a previous video, we used the Minute Maid Orange Juice dataset, and we'll continue to use that here. And we identified a relationship between Minute Maid prices and Minute Maid sales. Specifically, we said that sales is a function of some constant, beta zero, plus beta one, a coefficient associated with the influence of price on sales, times price itself. So if we plug everything in, we say sales is this function. But this model seems a little bit simplistic. For instance, we don't take into account competitive behavior. And so regression is actually very good at doing that. It's good at taking into account lots of other factors so that we can create a much more sophisticated model that predicts something like sales. Let's jump right over to SPSS and take a look and see if we can predict sales as a function not just of Minute Maze prices, but also the prices of its competitors. So we can go to Analyze, Regression, Linear. We want to predict Minute Maid sales, and we're going to say let's also use Minute Maid sales, Tropicana Premium price, Tropicana Regular price, and the Store Brands price. And we're simultaneously going to include all of these in the regression. And what that'll let us do is say what the influence of any price changes on sales, taking into account the fact that the price of other products may have changed as well. We're simultaneously estimating all of these. So let's do that and see what happens. If we scroll down to our coefficients, what we find is that all of these are actually significant. In other words, all of these prices influence sales. And so we see that minimum made price has a negative effect on sales such that as the price of my product goes up, my own sales go down. And for the other three, we see that they have a positive effect. So as competitor prices go up, my own sales go up as well. And if you recall, in a previous video when we just ran the regression of Minute Maid price on sales, we saw that the adjusted R squared was about 0.4, or about 40% of all the fluctuation in sales could be explained just my, by my own prices. Well, when we include all four of these prices in the equation, what we find is that the adjusted R squared is actually 0.66. In other words, we're able to explain an additional 26% of the variation. We can now predict two thirds of all variation in sales just with these four different price variables. But we actually have even more than this. We also have the advertising behavior of myself, my brand, as well as the competitor brands. So why don't we include those in the regression as well? We go to Analyze, Regression, Linear. And in addition to these prices, what we want to include are these four variables here, which are the presence or absence of ads by me, Minute Maid Advertising, and my competitors, these three below. So I select them, move them over, and I hit OK. And if I scroll down to my output and to my coefficients, I see that there's quite a bit of influence of advertising. For instance, when my company, when Minute Maid advertises, I get an increase in sales, that's significant. And so this seems like advertising is actually pretty effective. We also see that there's some variation in the degree to which my competitors' advertising influences my own sales. So for instance, when Tropicana Premium advertises, it actually has no meaningful influence on my sales, which is indicated by the significance factor being above 0.05. There's a slight influence of Tropicana Regular advertising on my own sales, and there seems to be a pretty strong influence of the store brand advertising on my sales, such that when the store brand advertises, I expect to lose 82 units of sales. Now what's also worth pointing out is that if we look at our total adjusted R squared, it's actually now 78.7%. That means we could explain 78.7% of all variation in sales with just these variables. That makes this a very powerful tool for actually running predictions and simulations. What we could do is we can say, Given these different variables, I can simulate different environments and see what I would expect in terms of my sales. That lets me strategically plan for different types of advertising and different types of promotions because promotions are in fact going to influence my sales. So just to wrap up the conversation on multiple regression and regression in general, conceptually this procedure allows us to track multiple variables at the same time. We could do things like track the influence of competition, we can control for exogenous factors even, like the weather and seasonality, by just including additional factors. Because for instance, weather, something that we have no control over, 
may very well have an influence on sales. If there's a snowstorm, I bet you're not selling a lot of orange juice. And every added variable will actually help improve the fit of the model to the given data, which is nice. That tells us that we can have more predictive power. However, there are some pitfalls. For instance, just because you can better fit a model doesn't necessarily mean you can better predict the future. There's this problem known as overfit, meaning you've calibrated a model so perfectly to the data that you happen to have, it fails to actually predict anything that we call as out of sample, meaning it can't really predict a different data set. So at the very extreme, if I have 10 data points and I have 10 variables, I can perfectly predict those 10 data points. But what I can't necessarily do is predict a new data point, in other words, next week's data. So there's a fine line between how many variables you include in your model and its ability to predict itself, as well as its ability to predict outside data or future data. Not to get too technical, I'll, I'll keep this light, but bad things tend to happen when our predictors are strongly related to each other. This is something that is known as multicollinearity, and we're actually just not gonna have the capacity to cover it in this course. Another problem is that this model intrinsically assumes that a linear relationship is a pretty good approximation of what we're trying to predict. Now, that's often the case, but not always. Sometimes relationships are curvilinear, and so we need additional tools like quadratic components to our regressions in order to accommodate this. Now, the nice thing about what I'm teaching you here with regression is that this is incredibly flexible. Adding quadratic terms or changing our assumptions about the underlying distributions in the data it's actually pretty easy to do both in SPSS and other data packages. And so here I'm laying the foundation for this tool regression and you can make it as sophisticated as you want. One example of when nonlinearity actually is, is very helpful in fitting data is in price elasticities. It's something we didn't really talk about when we did price elasticities, but what you can do is what's known as a log log response function, where you take the log both of price and of sales and it turns out you can much better fit the data. Now, I'm not going to discuss this much further right now because it'll be part of your assignment, and I'd like you to try and figure this out on your own.